Color Guard, post colors. Present arms. If you would uh, all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, those who are veterans, please honor the uh, veterans and salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say.
car. Forward, assemble. Color guard, assemble. Thank you. Please be seated and enjoy the program. Good morning, everybody, and happy Fourth of July, Irwin. We're grateful that you're here and grateful that we're able to entertain you. You just watched a group of veterans be very patriotic. Veterans seem to share a very special feeling about everything being patriotic. For instance, one of our cast members, Dave Wright, during auditions was asked if he would sing the national anthem, being a veteran himself. He declined, saying, I always get choked up when I try to sing that song. Speaking of veterans, I'm sure we have many of you here in the audience. We would like to honor you. So if you and your family would stand or wave your hand, we would like to honor you.
Saturday, everybody's smiling, Connie. Why don't you tell us about your song? Okay. Well, this song was introduced by country singer Lee Greenwood on January 1st, 1992. It is a beloved song for all patriotic holidays. Can either of you guess the name of that song? Oh, could you give us a hint? Well, <coughs> oh, the singer is asking for a blessing. Uh, on the food? No. <laughs> Can any of you help thank you do it all day? I guess the name of that song. God bless the USA. No, it was God Bless America, sung by Kate Smith, who was really big in the 40s. <laughs> and in other places, if you get my drift. <laughs> well, I resemble that remark. <laughs> and she was not a country singer. She was so a country singer. She sang Rocky Mountain. When the moon comes over the no. Rocky Mountain. <laughs> uh, Rocky Mountain High was written by John Denver. So, was he a stoner? <laughs> oh, oh, you are terrible. You know, Rex. Yes. It's amazing that they didn't spell your name in the program. W R E C K S. <laughs> well, anyway, so please. Sit down and be quiet. Uh, <laughs> and I'm so sorry, Connie. Now, let's see, where were we? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, yes, God Bless USA was correct. Come on, Yankee, let's get rid of the stage. Tomorrow all the things were gone Seems good in me And I haven't started again With only just my family I think my lucky star Is to be living here today As the clouds just dance with freedom And they can't take that
where we watch the tap stars dance to Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy from Company B. Oh, 
Sharp. Her nickname was Betcheros. <laughs> Betcheros? <laughs> you made that up. <laughs> no. It was Betcheros. I made that beautiful flag. <laughs> oh, you are terrible. Oh, sit down. Be quiet. And oh, I wish I had some soap. Um, 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 oh, but I do have a scarf. What? What? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uncle Sam. We'll be quite <laughs> Okay, so right now we have our own Bessie Ross to tell us about our own flag. And we're really sorry about the hecklers. Uh, I hope she got in quiet. That's okay, Uncle Sam. You put up with so much. In 1776, in late May, I received a knock on the door. Three gentlemen had come to visit. General George Washington, Robert Morris, and Colonel George Ross. He was my late husband's uncle. They brought with them a proposal, a sketch, for a new flag for our new nation, and asked if I could create it. And I told them I would try my very best. And with a couple of small tweaks, on June 14, 1777, Congress approved the flag known forevermore as the Stars and Stripes. It has changed somewhat just in the fact that we started with 13 colonies and now we have 50 states and the stars have increased to 50. But that flag has flown over our country for over 240 some years. It has been there through triumph and tragedy too numerous to count. The latest tragedy has taken so many of our American lives and it still rages on and it's rattling our souls to this day. Another tragedy happened 20 years ago. 9-11. Two words, two numbers, and it tells it all. During that tragedy, an unknown author wrote this poem, simply called The Flag. I raised a flag today, a flag with 50 stars, I raised a flag today, a flag with 13 bars. I raised a flag today to honor those who died. I raised a flag today, and then I stood and cried. I wept and cursed and prayed and had to wonder why. The angst and anger welled inside me. And then I saw it fly. The flag snapped briskly in the wind. It unfurled in the sky. Its glory rose above my fears. Its freedom was not denied. The symbol of our country, the banner of our pride, the flag of these United States, Wait proudly by my side. I raised a flag today, but that flag, it lifted me. I raised a flag today for all the world to see. I raised a flag today, and upon seeing it, I knew that above the dusty ashen gray would rise the red the white and the blue.
uh, I see you got a cane there, Yankee Doodle. Uh, do you have a leg problem? I do. Whenever I hear Big Cat's music, my legs get going. They can't hold still. <laughs> okay. Audience, would you like to see Yankee Doodle's song? Say that to her face. 
Well, I won't, but you have to admit she's a little bit off the rails.
years. Uh, well, as I was driving over here, I noticed that my... Amber! You're here! <laughs> yes! I'm here and I'm going to tell you something very exciting. But, but, but why are you so late? Yes, that's what we'd all like to know. That's what I'm trying to tell you before all the fireworks start. Okay. But just keep it brief. As I was driving over here, I noticed the sign for that mom and pop cafe where they serve that fabulous ice cream. You know the place. And you know how much I love ice cream. Every 4th of July, my family would get together and we'd make delicious homemade vanilla ice cream. And then we'd all jump in the car and go downtown to see the movie matinee. Amber! What? Oh, I'm sorry. Please continue. I forgot what I was talking about. It works every time. <laughs> it was something about mom and pop and ice cream. Oh, now I remember. Okay. As I went inside the shop, I noticed there was a single man sitting at the counter drinking a cup of coffee. He turned and nodded, and that's when I realized it was, guess who? Um, Uncle Sam. No, silly, not Uncle Sam. It was that very famous movie star, my favorite, Paul Newman. <laughs> you saw Paul Flippin' Newman? I saw Paul Newman. And he looked up at me with those great, big, beautiful blue eyes. And he nodded. And he smiled, kind of like, how do you do? Well, did he say anything? Be patient. <laughs> so I smiled and I nodded back. And I noticed that he was watching me as I went to the ice cream counter. And I ordered a double scoop of ice cream cone. <laughs> I was so nervous, I could feel him watching me as I took two bills out of my purse and then I put the change in my other hand. Too much detail! I'm telling this story! <laughs> as I went out the door, I noticed that Paul was watching me and smiling. Oh! <laughs> I hurried out to my car, and then I realized I didn't have my ice cream cone. <laughs> oh, what? You're kidding! No, I was so embarrassed, but I wanted that ice cream. So I swallowed my pride, and I went back inside, thinking that the server would be standing there, holding my ice cream cone, waiting for me to come back for it. Well, was he? Was he what? <laughs> <laughs> holding your ice cream cone, hello? Oh, no, not even was he not holding my ice cream cone. He wasn't even there. I slowly glanced over at Mr. Newman who with a big grin on his face said, you put it in your purse. <laughs> I spin it along. <laughs> now listen to this, listen to this. As I was going out the door, I very cleverly turned toward Paul. And just like that line from Cool hand, Luke. I said, what we've got here is a failure to communicate.
the hot tomatoes for a, a really good laugh. <laughs> So uh, you, we can thank them for their participation today. Thank <laughs> you. 